Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming on. I've, uh, I've got an update for you guys on a few, uh, you know, like rainstorms that are going to be moving through the U.S. this weekend and basically what you should be looking forward to this Memorial weekend when it uh, comes to weather. That we also do have um, not a, it turns out it won't be a tropical, like it's not going to be a tropical like system. It's just going to be a rainstorm that's going to be moving in a Memorial Day weekend um, or I think a, a few days prior to Memorial Day weekend um, across the se the southeast coast, like the Carolina coastline, you guys are going to get hit the hardest by this, um, but we're going to see some very, very high rainfall amounts and some uh, pretty gusty winds. So we're going to talk about all of this in your update. So what we've got going on is you've got a little pocket of rainfall that's moving across. It's not quite in the northeast now. It's going to be moving into those uh, areas a little bit later in the day, um, but you can see that you've got some light to moderate uh, rainfall that's that's uh, pretty steady. It's been moving like like this um, um, all of last night, and this hasn't really changed directions. It's just heading uh, directly southeast, so you may see um, some lingering rain showers uh, around you know northern New York State, Vermont, New Hampshire, um, and then maybe a bit of Maine. You guys. No, I wouldn't say, like, if I had to split Maine in half, like, this side of Maine, uh, you guys should be mostly dry for today, but you guys up here, um, you know, closer to Canada, you guys will definitely see some more rain. Um, and then we just have a bunch of, you know, pockets of rainfall that's, that's kind of just moving their own ways across the United States. Um, but this one is going to turn severe. Um, we did see a lot of severe weather yesterday. Um, in the same area, I think we did see a tornado or two, um, but there is definitely that threat still lingering out there. And I uh, just want to say now, um, sorry for, you know, not, I haven't uploaded in a long time. This is just because I've had so much school lately, you know, all the school work, it's, it's just very crazy. So I'm, I think, you know, once I, I think around like June 29th, that's when, or not June 29th, even sooner than that, I think. I'll uh, start, you know, uploading a lot more often just because, you know, the work's not going to be nearly as bad as it uh, was in the last few weeks. Um, but, yeah, I'll, you'll definitely see me uploading a little bit more, at least starting, uh, you know, this weekend. But I'm just going to, you know, try my best to get as many updates as I can in for you guys. Um, and then you do also have a few storms off to the north. These luckily aren't severe. These are just some, uh, you know, regular sp late spring thunderstorms that have been, uh, you know, firing across these areas uh, yesterday and today. Um, but yeah, so so pretty much the entire country is uh, pretty quiet. But I wonder, you know, will this last? Because uh, all these pattern changes, pattern changes have really sparked a lot of severe weather in the past. But luckily, it hasn't been too. Uh, too severe. And we're going to be looking at your alerts now to start things off. And you can see that, you know, based on what I just looked at on the radar, you can tell that there there isn't much happening, so you don't really have much alerts. Um, but you do have a frost advisory and a freeze warning that goes out for northern Michigan and some parts of northern Wisconsin. Um, but most, most of Wisconsin, you guys will be just above freezing uh, you know, for, for your temperatures this morning. Um, but you guys in northern Michigan, you guys will definitely dip below freezing. Anybody in this blue or purple, you guys will at one point see temperatures, uh, you know, 32 degrees or below. Um, and the pretty much the rest of the country is okay for now. You do have a heat advisory, um, but this is not, this doesn't, this goes for, like, the coastal regions of, uh, you know, you know, like southern Alabama, southern Mississippi, um, but it's not even like, this is, I don't even why the National Weather Service put this out here, um, but if we click on it, I mean, this does, you know, cons you would, I guess the National Weather Service is considering this as mobile Alabama, um, but you could, I mean, you could see that there are two areas with special marine warning. I uh, don't think I actually, I actually don't think I realized that this is actually not a heat advisory. So, uh, scratch all that I, scratch everything I said right there. I think the heat advisory, I can't, I don't, I think it's just in a 
one like one county. I can't. I just can't see it. Um, but otherwise, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. And then a few uh, flood watches out here for south southeastern Idaho, but um, that that shouldn't be too bad. And we're not going to be. We're now going to be looking at the south central U.S. So, like I said earlier, there is a chance for severe weather today. It's not going to be too bad. But we're going to break all this down, and we're going to see, um, you know, how how severe it's going to get, the ingredients, and kind of, you know, what we're going to be seeing today. But you could see that there there is a few pockets of snow, and this has been pretty heavy across the Rockies and you know the upper elevations of Colorado. Now that's going to that's going to you know kind of go off to the northwest so yeah uh, if you're if any of you are going to be fooled by this i'm just telling you now that the main even though it doesn't look as bad as it will be the main you know the main storms right here are in central texas these are the ones that are going to be blowing up on your radar um, and these are just going to be fizzling out once we get later into the morning hours of today um, but you could see that these storms do not waste any time to get going. This is um, already, you know, this is already 1 a.m. This was already 1 a.m. this morning and already had um, some pretty strong storms that have been moving across central uh, Texas, and they're going to be moving towards the DFW area. Um, but then you could see that they kind of, uh, they kind of, you know, weaken right here. The, the farther, the southern storm, this one is still going to be, uh, you know, moving pretty well. Um, and that's good. These storms are going to be moving very fast, but they're going to be rapidly changing directions. You can see that they've stayed in Texas for a long time, but now these storms north have jumped up into, uh, you know, the panhandle of Oklahoma. So we're going to see if maybe, you know, just the ingredients for this, you know, kind of based on what state these storms are going to be impacting in is what's going to be changing kind of the way they act or if we're going to be just seeing the same kind of the same story where we're going to see some damaging hail, maybe some damaging wind gusts, but a very low tornado threat. So, I mean, this is noon today and you don't really see much happening. So this morning, once if you can get through this morning, you'll probably get that's probably I would say you could call that the first round of the severe weather today. But then here comes the second round. You can see that we start seeing more precipitation uh, and more storms down here in central Texas. But look what's back. You have some more uh, rain showers and thunderstorms and then possibly even some snow showers back into Colorado. Those have returned. And now you start seeing the main show, which is going to be around 9, 9, uh, 9 p.m. tonight. So if you're getting into like the early or the you know the late evening hours of tonight that's when you're going to start seeing those you know stronger more long track storms uh than what we, the, what we've been seeing this morning this is really going to be you know posing the highest damaging wind threat and damaging hail threat of the day um and maybe you'll get a super cell or two i mean this one looks like you get a pretty good hook echo here you got a nice area of broad rotation um do, but obviously, we can't say that this one, this exact storm, is going to be tornado warned. We obviously have to go through the day. But you know, what if you see any uh, kind of hook, hook, you know, if, if you see any hook echo like this or a curviness on the storms, you know how they appear like if they appear like that, well then maybe that's going. Those storms are going to you know produce more of a higher damage, uh, you know, tornado threat. But otherwise, I mean, you can see that. There's not much left after, uh, you know, f three, four in the morning. You know, you're already getting into five in the morning tomorrow, and you're pretty much done with the storms. Maybe a few storms left, but this is way off to the north, already getting into Kansas, and then parts of southern, uh, you know, southern Nebraska. You guys could see some spotty storms, spotty showers, um, but really nothing too bad out there. And um, we we just play this back into uh tomorrow and maybe you'll have some more storms but these definitely don't look uh you know that bad uh, maybe the ones here in uh farther west you know southwestern texas you guys could definitely see um some stronger storms as well just because that you're gonna have a low pressure center nearby that's basically controlling all the storms and now if we go back to the storms that we had today 
you didn't have your you didn't have a low pressure center. These were just a bunch of leftover storms from the from the past uh, rainstorm that moved across this region, which was yesterday. Um, but yeah, you're just gonna see a few lines of these storms moving across the same region over and over again. It's almost like a cycle. It's like you know they move they sweep a little bit far south, and then they just move directly directly east, and then they stop. Once they get into like central, they line up right here in the central Kansas, Oklahoma, and central Texas, and then they go off to the north, go back west, and then they start all over again. And that's what you're going to be seeing um, for the next few days. So, you know, we're already getting into like, I believe this would be Friday, Friday or Saturday, um, but you're, you're definitely nearing, uh, if, you're, if you're not in your Memorial Day weekend already, you're definitely nearing memorial day and you're starting to see uh that cycle you know coming back again because you're because you're seeing those storms farther up to the north then they're going to move west but you know really what you should expect not too much from these storms they're not going to be very strong just make sure you're always prepared for what you're going to be seeing today uh and you know obviously in the next few days but we're definitely going to continue seeing this cycle so there's i feel like i, I think what's going to happen is for, for the rest of the Spring every day, we we're gonna see some thunderstorms in you know this entire region, um, but you know it's not gonna be the same you know specific place every single day. But in general, there's always going to be a very low severe weather threat uh, every day for this area. You know it's not gonna get too high, but uh, once we start seeing those more like stronger severe weather events, once we get into like the summer. Uh, the summer season, that's when we're going to start seeing those enhanced risks, uh, those, maybe the, even those moderate risks, but hopefully not uh, the high risk. But um, for now, you, sh you guys should be uh, okay. Um, but we're going to be looking at the southeast now. Um, we're not going to be looking at, you know, this tropical-like system. Well, actually, found out earlier today, it's actually not going to be a tropical-like system. It's going to be a rainstorm. It's going to be impacting the Carolina coastline. We're not going to be looking at that uh, in this part of the update. Uh, so if you want to check in uh, a little bit later, you can you can uh, kind of you know fast forward to the part of the up video where I actually will be talking about this. Um, but right now, I just kind of want to show you guys the outlook for today. Um, for the southeast, mainly mainly clear. Uh, maybe a few showers, um, but off to the north, so like maybe around Tennessee. Uh, I would say mainly central Tennessee. Otherwise, it will be completely dry. There's a lot, and just keep in mind that there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's chilly and dry air right in this area. And it's a pocket of dry and cold air that's going to be stretching down into South Carolina and then grabbing parts of Georgia with it. And then the rest of the warm air is going to be sparking a few storms uh, and, and shower, showers and storms in this area. So what you're going to be seeing is you're going to see, uh, you know, a very, it's not going to be a too strong, but you're going to see a low pressure system pop off of the, you know, western coast of Florida. Now this is going to bring some, uh, torren you know, torrential downpours for central Florida and maybe some severe storms later in the day for central Florida. Maybe the, you know, here the you know, areas for the south, um, but just the entire panhandle of Florida, you guys will definitely get hit by some pretty strong storms today. And then you're starting to see those ingredients for that rainstorm starting to take shape right here. Um, you don't see it yet on the FV3, but pretty soon you're going to start seeing that rotation right in this area. And then you're going to see some a lot more you know, intense precipitation around that circled area. Um, but yeah, the southeast, you guys should definitely... Um, you'll, you'll be mostly dry, but you, you pretty much have to be a little bit farther north, so like the Carolinas, you guys will be dry, um, pretty warm today, um, but then tomorrow you're going to start seeing that change in the forecast. Um, and then this low pressure system really tries to get something going right here. You can see that we've got many, many areas of some uh, scattered storms out here. Um, this is 9 a.m. this morning. And um, so this is basically what we saw on the radar. And then we're getting into the afternoon hours, and you're just seeing the same story over and over again. 
um, some just regular spring thunderstorms moving across uh, the Panhandle of Florida. So what you're going to see with this, maybe uh, and you'll definitely hear some rumbles of thunder, maybe some flashes of lightning, but you're not going to see any of that cloud-to-ground lightning. Um, not even, I don't think that you'll see any severe weather with this, um, but that's obviously possible. It's just very unlikely. Um, and then these will fizzle out once we get into the overnight hours when temperatures kind of get a little cooler. And we're not going to be looking, we're now going to be looking at your SPC, so severe weather percentages for today. You can see that you're only up to a slight risk, um, but notice that this area is actually farther uh, northwest than what we, you know, kind of looked at on with the south central is that we saw, you know, the same story for this entire region here of, of uh, central Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas, that we would see a lot of uh, possible severe weather in these areas. Um, but, you know, the National Weather Service really is agreeing on more severe weather off to the west. So we're going to continue watching this, um, but just pay attention. If you're if you're living in any of these, uh, excuse me, areas in, shaded in yellow or in green, you guys, you guys got to pay attention to this. I mean, you've got two areas uh, in a marginal risk. This goes out for uh, south and central Florida. Um, and then this has a few major cities in this. You've got Tampa, Florida, Miami, Florida, and, you know, um, looks like you got Fort Myers as well, Orlando. Um, and then for the area, you know, farther, farther west, you know, close to the plains, you've got uh, Denver, Colorado, Colorado Springs, Colorado Springs, uh, Aurora, Colorado, and you've got Lubbock, Texas, uh, Abilene, Texas, Fort, uh, I don't even know how you say this, Fort Stockton, Texas, I, Texas, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but, um, you know, correct me if I'm not saying that right, but um, the slight risk, this is what the main thing that we're going to be looking at today, uh, that goes out for Armor, Armorillo, Texas, Clovis, New Mexico, uh, Hereford, Texas, uh, Dumas, Texas, and Borger, Texas, Borger, Texas. Um, but otherwise, you know, you're just going to have a bunch of scattered storms out here um, across the country. You can see all these areas shaded in light green. You guys are, uh, you guys definitely, there's a chance that you guys will see storms, but, you know, it doesn't guarantee that everyone in a shaded area is going to see at least one thunderstorm. And then you also see that same area up here in the northeast. This is just indicating where that, you know, little band of rainfall is going to be moving through. And we're going to be looking at now this uh, tropical rain, or not tropical rainstorm, uh, this, you know, spring rainstorm. Now, I don't say tropical rainstorm because if it were to be tropical, you would need, you know, a widespread warm air and you would need a bunch of, you know, like uh, moisture. But with this, this is going to be kind of a flip-flop situation where you think that, you know, you see you see a pretty strong storm coming up on the GFS, and you've been seeing this for a pretty long time now. And it's getting to the point where you're, you're going to see this start to take shape. Um, but look, you know, any, any place above, uh, you know, farther north than, like, the northern edge of uh, North Carolina – don't see that much warm air left. So, you know, you're, if you need the entire region to be covered in lots, lots of warm air, you know, very, a very little wind shear, and you also need a ton of moisture. That is, those are the main, the key ingredients um, for a hurricane drop like system or anything like that. So these are kind of like, um, I don't want to, and I don't want to, kind of some, say something silly, but, you know, these are kind of like babies. You know how babies, they need very precise and, you know, kind of like perfect conditions. Well, that's what hurricanes need. You see that they need the exact right amount of, uh, you know, moisture. They need very warm temperatures, but also it hugely depends on, you know, the sea surface temperatures, which I don't think we're looking at today. We could do it on the fly here. Um, later in the update, but they need uh, a very, very little amount of wind shear or none. So um, basically when this is going to start taking shape is you'll start seeing that rotation starting probably 
once you get into the late, the very late afternoon hours and then into the early evening hours of tomorrow. That's when you're going to start seeing some more uh, widespread precip precipitation. You're seeing precipitation that belongs to the system all the way into the Gulf of Mexico. And this center, the you know, the center of the storm, this is off the coast of the Carolinas. I mean, you can see the low pressure is off the coast of Florida, but still, this is like hundreds of miles away. I mean, this is a very, very big system right here. Um, but then you start seeing this, you know, the strongest point of it, and you're seeing two areas of very, very intense rainfall. You can see here that you've got one area here just off the coast of Georgia um, bringing, you know, rainfall rates of 12 to 16 inches per hour. So obviously we're not going to be seeing, a, you know, you know, like 16 hours of, uh, you know, one inch per hour rate, you know, rates of rainfall. Um, but you're definitely going to see at least, I think if you're on this, uh, if you're, in any of the uh, of the you know shaded areas here, in red, you guys will definitely see at least three and a half inches of rain. That's a definite because this has not changed, you know, and everyone is still holding on to the idea that we're going to see a very you know high flood threat with this. You know, definitely coastal flooding is going to be a huge thing with this system because you're also going to have gusty winds with this, um, but. You know, the strongest point of it is probably going to be, it looks like somewhere around, you know, the morning hours of, looks like this would be Friday uh, into the you know, overnight hours of Friday as well. So pretty much all day Friday is going to be the main part of the system. This is 8 p.m., uh, you know, Friday. You're, you do have a technical landfall with this, but you can't really say landfall because this is not considered a tropical system. Um and this, this is still going to hold on to this its own low pressure system and center, but it's not going to drop um, below. It's not going to drop below a thousand millibars. I mean, maybe a few areas like uh, you know farther away from the center of low pressure could drop you know below a thousand millibars, but really the low pressure center is not going to drop into you know the nine hundreds. And if it did, I think that's where you could see. A little bit, you know, higher, you know, a little bit higher of a chance to see a tropical-like system form here. Um, and there used to be a ten percent, a ten percent chance of tropical activity, or uh, you know, you know, you know, forming uh, of a tropical-like system, um, according to the National Hurricane Center. But they have eliminated that chance for now. So now you don't have uh, any chance for. A tropical -like system form, so that just tells you that this is just going to be a your typical, uh, you know, coastal rainstorm, your your coastal rainstorm, and this is going to bring uh, damaging wind gusts. That's definitely possible. A few, uh, you know, areas where you could see some severe storms. You're gonna have a flooding threat, um, and and that's and maybe some uh, high waves out here. Yeah, that's definitely going to be. A problem that we could consider, but um, this is really just going to fall apart once you get into the weekend, um, Memorial Day weekend. So, um, really, if you can get through Friday, you should be pretty much okay. It's just going to be uh, pretty wet out there on Friday, but then, you know, s late Saturday into early morning hours of Sunday, you guys will definitely be dry, uh, but then some precipitation might return because you do have a lot more precipitation left over. Uh, off the coast, um, but we're now going to be looking at you know the rainfall totals just to see kind of what we're what zone we're in. So I'm just going to wait for this to load. It'll load eventually, but um, that you'll definitely see multiple inches of rainfall that can definitely fall with this. So um, you can see here that I mean I put I already put this out to the end of, from the start to the end of the system, and you're definitely going to pick up a lot of rainfall. I mean you can see. All across uh, South Carolina, you could see anywhere from uh, an inch, a little bit less than an inch, to three inches of rain. But notice that a lot closer to the coastline, this is, I mean, all of this is off the coast, 15 inches of rain. We did see rainfall rates of up to 16 inches per hour. Well, that's showing here. I mean, it's 15 inches of rain. That is, I mean, 18, 18, this is almost 18 and a half inches of rain. Uh, but this is luckily offshore, 
Um, but the most rain you're going to get onshore is probably right right here in, um, you know, just, I mean, I don't, I don't even know if this is offshore, but, you know, just on the coast of Georgia. You could see rainfall, you know, rain, you know rainfall totals up to five and a half inches of rain. Um, but this is just, like, just farther south than the, t the southern tip of South Carolina. Um, but anywhere along this, you know, coastline, you will you will definitely see at least two inches of rain. That's just, that's basically just what we're going to be seeing with this system. The most onshore rainfall, it's probably going to go to South Carolina because you guys, you can see, you guys are just going to see the, you know, you're, you're going to have the state with the most rainfall in general. North Carolina, you guys are going to have considerably a lot less rainfall than what we're going to be seeing in Georgia and South Carolina, even the coastline. You can see the coastline is only getting... Uh, up to two and a half inches of rain. So very interesting to see what, how much rainfall this is going to bring. Uh, but you really don't see a huge difference, um, you know, between rainfall amounts in South Carolina and Georgia. So we're, we're going to definitely continue watching to see if we're going to see any changes with the rainfall totals from this system. But it's just going to be a very rainy and wet, you know, day, few days in general. Um, and this should last only between, you know, one and three days, in two and a half days, I should say. Um, but really, if you're the three main states getting hit by this is going to be Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina. Which you know, which coastal region is going to get hit the hardest? Well, the Carolina coastline, specifically, you know, South Carolina, and then a bit of Georgia. So um, that's pretty much it for your rainfall totals. And we're just gonna we're gonna briefly look at how you know strong these wind gusts could be. So. Um, it's not a thing that I, it's not a thing that you know I've looked at in the past with trop like systems because I only manage I I could only uh, you know kind of forecast uh, one two of them because I actually started the channel uh, dur during late uh, you know tropical you know tropic uh, you know late hurricane season um, that's when I started my channel last year so you know, I can only manage uh, to forecast one, uh, two of these tropical -like systems, so this is going to be kind of a first for me, so if I'm a little shaky with my forecast here, this is just because, you know, this is pretty much my first time actually, you know, doing tropical systems, um, but I'm pretty much used to, like, you know, severe weather events and winter storms, but, you know, I'm going to try my best with this. So I started this out Friday morning, you know, the very, the you know, very start of Friday, and that's pretty much where I see you know, the, the first point of this where it starts to kind of, you know, you see, you start seeing rotation and it starts to kind of strengthen. Um, but you're going to have a jet stream. You know, this jet stream is going to be kind of moving in down into uh, Arkansas and then kind of just north of, you know, North Carolina. And um, that's going to bring a, a, a wind pattern that's going to bring some very strong wind gusts that's going to scrape um, across the southern border of, you know, this, this like, uh, warm air. So, basically, if I were to show you where the warm air is and the cold air is, well, you can't really tell based on this map, but we can if we looked at a different map. What, so, what you'll see is that you'll see warm air uh, pretty much in this entire region. And then, you know, you'll, you'll start seeing some colder air and some cooler air. Um, in this region, so I'll, I'll I'll make my I'll make the color of my pen blue if I can do that. Um, but but you're just gonna see that the the colder air is going to be in this area here. I'm circling, um, and then that basically what that what that's gonna be doing is that there's a lot of warm air left offshore, and it's going to kind of the the wind is going to want to put it's gonna it's it's gonna want to push it on shore, push, shove, uh, shove all this uh, warm air on shore. Um, but what it actually does is that actually collides with this uh, tropical, or not, I keep saying tropical ice system, this rainstorm, it collides, and that's just going to bring a, that's going to bring a pretty high damaging wind threat. If, if you, you know, if you understood what any of that meant, meant um, but just in general, the, that there's definitely going to be a very big area of some damaging wind gusts right here across the coast of the Carolinas. Um, and then we get 
we're gonna start around you know nine nine in the morning Friday. This is nine in the morning Friday, and you know you're definitely seeing broad rotation with this system, and you're seeing a lot all this you know all these wind particles you're seeing it kind of you know coming into the center of the storm. This is all the moisture being dragged into the center of the storm because this storm is going to try and suck in as much moisture as it can um, because it doesn't have much left. So it's going to form all of a sudden and it's going to kind of figure out what it's going to do. And it's just right, right off the bat, every tropical like system, what every tropical like system does once the second it forms is it tries to soak in as much moisture as it can based on what it has um, in its environment. That's what this one's going to do, and that's what poses that damaging wind threat. So, um, this is just your wind speeds. I mean, this is 40 miles an hour uh, for your wind gusts. These are wind gusts heading south, so the southerly winds could get up to 40 miles an hour. That's 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 not even wind gusts. We turned to wind gusts, I didn't realize it was... I mean, this is wind gusts. You're going you're gonna to definitely see wind gusts. Someone's going to have wind gusts. Um, up to 50 miles an hour, maybe even 60 miles an hour. So very, very strong wind gust. Um, I don't want to see. I don't want to say you're gonna have an eye wall with this, but if you wanted to consider, you know, a uh, eye wall quotation with quotation marks, you could say that you know, just you know, off, you know, just off to the north of the center of the storm, you could have wind gusts up to you know 30, 40, and then maybe approaching 50 miles an hour. But that is, you know, farther north. So we're going to start seeing those sw those uh, stronger wind gusts moving a little bit further onshore. Um, and, and they also do, they, they strengthen as they move onshore. But here you start seeing wind gusts well over 50 miles an hour, 55 to, you know, 60 miles an hour. You know, this is actually, def this is, yeah, I believe that this is actually on the coast of uh, South Carolina and North Carolina. You will definitely have wind gusts of at least 45 miles an hour. Um, then we get into late Friday, um, and you still see, you know, those very, very strong wind gusts. Um, in Myrtle Beach, you guys are going to see at least 50 miles an hour, um, specifically 51. Um, and that's going to be, you know, very, very late, late night Friday. And then we get into Saturday, so I guess this would be, well, I think this would be 3 a.m., but um, you still see that very big area of rotation, um, but you don't see you know a more organized center of the storm because with an organized center of the storm with these, you would need you know almost down to like zero miles an hour for your wind gusts in the storm, kind of like an eye of the hurricane would be like, um, and then just you know off to the uh, off to the west, north, south, or east, you would have of the eye, you would have um, considering you know call it the eye wall. You would have wind gusts that could, you know, reach you know, those. That would be where the strongest wind gusts would be. But with this, the strongest wind gusts are going to be way off to the north and ahead of the system. So it's very interesting the characteristics of this. But um, watch as as this heads north. This is going to weaken very, very, uh, you know, quickly. And by Saturday, you're you're not going to see wind gusts over 30 miles an hour. Um, maybe maybe 40 just 40 miles an hour but you know that, that's pretty much it so um, that's it for your wind gusts now I'm just gonna quickly I, I want to look at the sea surface temperatures right here so uh, I want to show you you know what this storm has um, to like kind of pick up right here um, but if I scroll down I think we should find it uh, sea temperature here it is Um, so let me just wait for this to load. So you can see that, you know, these, these ocean temperatures out here, I mean, this, this is right now. So this is, you know, a crucial part of the system because this is when this storm is forming. So right now, I mean, you've got 74 degrees off the coast of, uh, looks like South Carolina and North Carolina. Um, but then in this area where this general area where the storm is going to form, I mean, 80 degrees is not bad. I, I, I would really say 80 degrees is going to get you um, a, a tropical-like storm. And even though this is not going to be a tropical-like storm, I mean, this definitely has, I, I would definitely say that this has the ingredients to put together a pretty significant storm um, for your 
Memorial Day weekend. But um, the main show is probably going to be you know, Friday into Saturday. But, I mean, it's 81 degrees for pretty much this entire area. For sea surface temperatures, that's really going to get you far with a um, pretty strong system out here. So that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any like, share, comment, and subscribe for not subscribed to the channel, we'll see you guys in the next video. So hope you guys enjoy your weekend, um, but stay safe out there and enjoy your day. We'll see you guys.